Okay, so <coughs> um, we've tied the reed in onto the staple and um, uh, let it dry overnight. But um, one thing I didn't mention was that I'd um, I'd painted some some glue, some yoohoo glue onto the outside of the the thread and um, let let that dry overnight also now I've created a bridle to fit around the reed which is uh, quite simple really um, take a bit of copper sheet cut it to about an eighth of an inch or less um, just bend it round one end and form a nice even shape there so that it fits around the bottom of the reed now you could e e equally at this point use a wire staple so wrap copper wire perhaps around the base of the, the reed um, but I actually like to use a, a copper stable staple because it's it's movable so it allows you some uh, um, some options to adjust the reed using the staple at a later date so get that on there nice and you want a nice even shape so that it fits around the reed and the dangerous bit is now really when you bend the the other half of the reed round of the the bridle round you can easily crack the reed at this point so you do this very delicately so I'll, I'll now take that off and just trim it I like to trim it at an angle rather than a straight, straight 45 degree cut because it fits nicely that way. Now just shape this up and make a nice even shape. You can do it basically with the pliers. Most of the way. So that when that goes back on there it fits down nicely. And as it comes down the end there it tends to, to the bottom end here, it tends to force the, the tongues close at the at the top so you're, you're able to control the reed using the staple. I might just tighten it down a little that way. And so long as the eye still remains even you got a nice nice staple. Well I've already started scraping this reed um, because I don't, I don't want to spend ages on the video but um, this protrusion here is um, identical to the mandrel that we um, formed the staple on originally so this will fit nicely it's got two flat surfaces on it so when I push the reed into the front of the carriage until it's snug it has to be an even a good fit so it'll be it'll be flush now I just want to set it up at this point so that the reed is flat to the um, 
to the sanding board. Now, if I just explain the sanding table to you briefly, it's a solid lump of wood with a couple of beads down the edge so that um, if I lay this on here and press down in the middle using these clamps it'll form a, a, a curved surface but to start with at least I want, a, I want a flat surface so I'll just support the centre of the board with these two sticks here and um, just hold it in place with the with the clamps which fit neatly into the into the end of the, the table anyway so and then I'll clamp the one of the sanding boards you might start off with a 60 grit or a coarse grit sandpaper board to start with um, to begin the scrape and I'll just set it up so that the, the cane can't overrun the end of the, the sanding board. Now if I release these two screws evenly that'll wind down the front axle which will give me um, I'll be able to uh, sand down to the height of the axle only um, and also if I want to if I'm if I start sanding and the, and the V starts to look uneven I can I'm just adjusting the focus here so you might be able to see a bit better but if the V starts to look uneven then I can adjust the sideways movement of the front axle by altering these screws, these two front screws, so that give me some sideways adjustment on the. If I start to scrape, I can see on a clean bit of sandpaper whether it's scraping or sanding evenly, and then we just look at it. I have some light here. I've got a magnified lens in my light. But you could use a magnifying glass to just check it. Um, if you lay your hand across the top of the cradle and just hold the front with one finger, you can lay your finger on onto the onto the blades and just sand away. You can feel what's happening that way, and you can also see if the if the if the sand paper is getting a nice even layer of dust on it see how even it is now at this point I'm gonna turn the reed round the other way up because it's getting close to to being ready now I can see from the uh, through the magnifying glass that it's 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 quite close I just want to move this slightly. As I say, I'm working on a flat scrape here, but some people prefer, or in some cases, you might need a curved surface if the corners of the cane or the edges of the, the reed are thicker than the centre of the sand you could adjust the sanding board to give you a slightly sat curved surface as I'm applying pressure to the to the cradle it's um it's keeping the reed at a fixed position but I can still feel with my fingers and I just light pressure on it as if I was sanding it by hand anyway but 
that's looking very close to me. Now, the bridle is stopping me from sanding any further back and the end stop here is stopping the back wheel from running any further back also so that uh, I can't damage the tips of the of the cane. You can adjust all of these things and you can also adjust the angle obviously of the of the reed to the sanding board by altering the height of the two axles alternatively until you get it to suit your own personal preference but this seems to be working fine and if you look at the scrape it's actually perfectly even on both sides of the reed you can't go any deeper unless I lower the front axle but I can just apply a little bit of pressure with my finger just for finishing touches and it quite nice to hold on to the front of the reed anyway while you're doing it so as I say I started off originally with 60 grit um, you might like to finish off with something as fine as 240 grit um, just a matter of literally putting a different sanding board in. Now just to demonstrate this, if I release these two clamps and take out these centre slips underneath the sanding board, the sanding table, Then if I start to wind these two clamps down, that will form a slight depression in the centre of the, of the sanding table, which forms a curved surface. So if I then come back and I would need at this point to lower both, lower the front axle to accommodate for the difference but now if I sand I'll be sanding at a slight curved surface instead of the original flat surface because I'm getting very close to a very thin reed mouth and I want it to be absolutely true So there it is. Now, as I say, you know, a fixed wire bridle um, isn't so adjustable, but it does give you a, a, a constant bridle position, which is useful in some cases. Uh, I don't know if that will crow yet, but I suspect it might do. There you go. So I would now set that reed aside for another 24 hours because I've been handling it and working it and I'll come back to it and then I'd give it a final a final sanding if need be check the crow and then all that remains to do from there is um, perhaps some adjustment to the staple to and um, perhaps a little trimming off the end of the reed to to get it into pitch and whatever whatever I have to do really to 
to um, to voice the reed to match it to the chanter, but that's another that's another story. Um, so there you go. That's my reed making kit. And the nice thing about the cradle, and also the gouging block, I'd have to say, is that you get consistency. Um, so you might want to make a batch of reeds, and you know that they're all going to be sanded to the same um, shape and thickness because you've set the front axle and it will work with all of your reeds with the whole batch so so long as you set this up there's a couple of locking nuts on here if you find that that's the perfect position for you you can set these locking nuts so that this front axle is fixed permanently and do the same with the back one and then that's your that's your your uh, your setup for your preferred um, profile of reed well thank you for watching